Let's get started. Um, so sort of just a little uh, backstory on me. Um, the reason why I'm teaching this is uh, in 2009 I was in a car crash. Um, and that car crash, um, it left me with fibromyalgia. It, um, it caused a spinal um, issue with my, my upper four vertebrae and my lower four vertebrae. Um, all other sorts of fun things. Um, so at that time I had to essentially relearn how to play this game. Um, and I had to, I had to figure out what my limitations were. I had to figure out how I could participate. Um, and I had to figure out different, different avenues for when I wasn't physically able to participate so that I could still be involved in this game. So I'm going to go over a bunch of stuff with you guys. Um, and I'm hoping that this might be able to help folks that have gone through similar situations, um, that have disabilities, illnesses, and injuries, um, and for able-bodied folks that um, are willing to be advocates and allies um, for our community and um, just kind of bring some awareness to this topic. Excuse me. Um, so first and foremost, we should address um, what is safe to play with and what is not. Um, so there are, there's a lot of different conditions that folks deal with. And um, it is important to know, um, again, boundaries, uh, limitations, what is medically safe, and what is uh, medically ill-advised. So um, for folks like me that have, you know, um, chronic pain issues, um, there are a lot of conditions to where they do not cause injury, they do not cause harm, they do not cause any prolonged issues at all. Um, what it is, is in the moment or directly off after, it can be painful. Um, but the important thing to note is getting out of, pain, out of bed is painful. Um, taking a shower, making yourself a meal, going to work, um, going for just a drive in general. Um, so for us to be participating in the game, and it can cause pain. It isn't us being reckless and going into a situation and going, I wouldn't be in pain otherwise, I'm going to go and do this and cause significant pain to myself. That's really not the situation. Um, we would be in pain regardless. It's chronic pain because it's chronic. It's always. Um, so you're always in an amount of pain. Um, essentially for us, it is a way for us to choose to still have a life, to still choose and enjoy life, and uh, not to give up and live our lives in a bed. So um, it is important to note that there are a lot of folks like myself that are out there um, with chronic pain conditions and that it is safe for us to play. Um, so please note that there are there are safe conditions. <coughs> um, folks with anxiety and depression, they're safe to play. Um, they're gonna have moments that are gonna be hard and struggles and, and that's okay. Um, but they are not endangering themselves by playing. And um, they're not crazy. They're not any of, you know, terrible words that, you know, get thrown around really recklessly. So uh, it is important to note that there are conditions you can play with. And that folks should not discourage folks that do attempt to play with those. Now, on the other side of the coin, there are situations to where it is not safe to play. Um, when you have things like injuries, when you have fractures and breaks and things like that, um, if you have prolonged injuries that um, are not healing, um, when otherwise they could be, things of that nature. Um, something where if you push yourself, you'll end up needing surgery, things like that. Um, even so much as 
having heat stroke, uh, frostbite, uh, anything like that to where uh, there is a an immediate danger to your body. Um, keeping in mind harm to your body, injury, things that are prolonged. Um, some folks just try to be hardcore and push through the pain and just do things and that's reckless behavior. Um, when you have um, something that causes damage. So those are the times to where if you are a reeve or an officer that you should step in. Uh, if they are not stopping themselves, yes, those are moments where you step in. Um, but we'll get into all of that later on. So there's that. <coughs> now, <clears throat> for folks that uh, have conditions where they cannot fight, they cannot be on a battlefield, they cannot be active in that way. Um, there are other options. There are other ways for you still to be a part of this game and still participate and still be in the community and still have impact. Um, so I'm going to go over just a few of those options. Uh, reaving. Oh gosh. <laughs> we, we really need reaves in this game. They are very essential. Um, and when you're out on injury or maybe you just have a real bad pain day, uh, if you are in a position to where it is safe for you to be there, right? You don't want to be in a really fragile situation to where you're doing um, a moving around reeve type position where someone could crash into you, someone could accidentally hit you, things like that. Um, right, understand the full role that you're doing, understand what you can physically do, but there's things like base reaving, things like that, um, that are typically pretty safe. Um, it's, it's those types of positions that you can still really be involved with your park and still be involved even with the game itself, right? Um, still being able to be present, still being able to, um, to have an impact and still feel like you're part of the game. Um, I've done it a whole bunch. Um, I've had surgeries where I was out for three months at a time and um, reaving was what really, really helped me. Um, playing color. Playing color is another thing. Uh, color is a fantastic thing and does not get enough credit, does not get enough uh, publicity and enough um, enough support. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a shout out to color. All of you color out there, you're fantastic. Keep that up. Um, color can can go over a really wide range of things. Um, it could be just that person coming to field, playing their guitar, just adding that extra, that extra oomph. Um, somebody who decorates, puts up banners, and, and really heightens um, the look of everything. Uh, the people that have a blanket out and have embroidery and welcome people to open RP with them and, and teach them how to sew and things like that. Um, just really welcoming folks that... Um, are sharing experiences, upping the immersion levels, and um, adding that little bit of color. So there's that. Now, uh, there's other things too. There's so many other things. Um, game design. <coughs> Maybe you're really in a situation and you can't be on that field. You can't even be close to it. Maybe you are stuck in a hospital, in a bed. Maybe you're stuck at home in your bed recovering. Uh, game design. You can create the games that your park gets to play you can still have that impact and you can still be involved. Um, so writing quests, writing, writing battle games, things like that. Um, again, huge, huge, huge things um, for involvement and things that are needed and will really impact your park. Um, those are all options. Um, another thing, office, being in office. Um, making sure that games are being run, making sure that the books are being upkept, the awards are getting um, handed out, that folks are getting taken care of, that the game is still running. If you can't be there playing on the field, you can still be fully involved with your park and still have a huge impact and still um, 
it's a lot. <laughs> Officers do a lot. <laughs> so it's, they're, they're a pretty critical uh, part of the game and um, for the functioning of your park. So that's another option, especially if you know that um, you're going to have a prolonged recovery time um, or you're in a situation to where the pain is just too much and being able to be on that battlefield is not a thing that is realistic for you. Um, that is an option for you. Um, one of my favorites, crafting. <laughs> um, so I am actually Serpentite, and I wouldn't have been if it weren't for that car crash, oddly enough. Um, I'll tell you right now. Uh, crafting was a huge, huge, huge thing for me, and it was, um, it was a form of therapy, it was a form of distraction, it was, um, I had a lot of time on my hands and um, I had great teachers, just really patient folks that were willing to teach me different mediums and different types until I found um, what my thing was. Um, and then from there, I just kept going and I learned all these different things and I found all sorts of other things that were my thing too. Um, and also things that I had done before that I didn't realize were things in this game. Um, so that's a huge thing. If you're into crafting, if that is a path for you, um, go hard into it. Just just go hard into it and, and know when you have those days where you can't make it out to field and you're just, you're, you're struggling. You're really struggling. Do you know what? Pick up a craft. Um, there's also tons of crafts that you can do in your bed um, while you're recovering, things like that. Um, hand stitching, embroidery, needle felting, things like that. Um, beading. There's there's a million things. There's really just a million things. Um, and you're really, you're really only limited by your imagination and um, you'd be shocked how much you can do and you'd be shocked to know um, how secretly skilled you are. <laughs> um, and, and for those that pick up a thing and maybe they don't just hit it right off the bat. Um, practice. Repetition. Um, will get you there. Um, for those that, that know kind of my, some of my other work, uh, the pearl dress that I made, uh, my first garb piece involved uh, hot glue. <laughs> so um, I, at that point, I really, uh, really didn't think I'd ever become a serpent knight. Um, though well, I did to dragons, but uh, that's beside the point. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, you don't, you don't realize what you can do until you try it, until you mess up a million times, um, and you get a little better every time. Um, the thing that I like to just kind of repeat a million times, and I will again, um, you learn more from your, your mistakes and your failures than you do by your successes. If you succeed at something, your first initial reaction is, well, good, I'm done, I did it. Uh, if you mess up something and you hate it, you go, okay, I don't want to do that again. I want to improve. What went wrong? Okay, this right here. Okay, next time I know that's the trouble spot. I'm going to do this. I now know how to do this. Boom. The next time that's better. Uh, and every time you go, you get better every single time. You learn something from the last thing. And if you get it right, right off the bat, you're not really inspired to, to keep going, keep trying. Um, so yeah, mess up, fail often, because um, you're gonna learn so much more, and it will be, it will be more rewarding in the end. Just trust me on that. Right now, it's gonna sound really strange and crazy, but um, yeah, a couple years down the line, remember this, and I'll just be like, ah, see. <laughs> um, there's again, there's so many different things you can do. These are just some examples, just uh, to clear. Um, one other thing that I didn't mention before, um, non-combative NPCs. Uh, for those of you that like RP, um, there are a lot of quest roles that are non-combatives. Uh, they might be as simple as you sitting in a chair under a tree, handing out items, uh, being a shopkeep, doing some sort of uh, thing of that nature to where you are fully immersed and fully involved with that quest and, and what you're doing could be completely essential to the storyline. Um, 
and you're still able to be there and you're still able to participate. Um, if you are in a role like that, remember, um, also if you're just even at field, remember that that gold sash means that you are non combative, that um, you are a do not hit person. So, um, and also if, if even you have even concern about that, you can literally write on your sash non combative um, or do not hit anything, any combination. Um, just if you have any concerns whatsoever, um, you can literally go to field wearing a gold sash from the moment you step out of your vehicle. Um, wear any sash that says do not hit or medical needs. Um, and, and folks are pretty good about it. Um, so, yeah, just these are options. Um, I'm going to go to questions real quick. Uh, remember that there is a 20 second delay. So um, if I don't get to your question right now, um, I will the next topic that I go into. But please, by all means, um, throw up those questions, and I will quickly just go over them. Okay. Just comments, good stuff. Hi, and thank you all for coming here. Um, this is fantastic. Appreciate it. Um... If there are no questions, then we will move on to the next topic. Give it just a second. Again, like my other classes, I'm going to do the silly dance. And uh, also, uh, right, I promised the jazz hands. There we go. That's for you. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. Um, hey, there we go. I remembered. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go to the next topic. Uh, quick hydration break. As a reminder, keep hydrated. If you're watching this, drink along. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. Um, for those that can participate in the game, um, I'm going to give some tips. Some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that have helped me be able to participate in this game um, on days that I'm physically able to do so. Um, and, and these are just some things that really helped me. Uh, please be advised, and this is the disclaimer, uh, these might not work for you. There might be other things that work better for you. If your doctor um, thinks that you are not in a situation where you should play, don't try these, don't play. Um, if your doctor finds that any one of these things would be uh, harmful for some reason or um, or detrimental in any way, depending on your, your injury, disability, or illness, um, again, avoid. Um, but these are pretty much just universal kind of things um, and should not be issues, but just in case. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's go into it. Um, so if you are playing something that is super important, and this is even if you are just doing a regular field day, um, but also super important for events, have a pouch on you. Um, have a pouch just right on your belt. Uh, what you need to do in having this pouch is uh, a list of your conditions, a list of your medications, uh, a list of instructions if uh, I need to take this many things if you see this, this, or this happen. Um, your ID, your insurance card, your, your medication, if you have any particular medication, um, keep it in like, like a case like this, uh, throw it right in your pouch. Um, and also if you have any emergency contact information, have that in there as well. Um, the big thing is this is generally, uh, this is your emergency kit and also your emergency room kit. Uh, if you are in a situation where you are in serious medical, uh, need, these are the things that a paramedic would first um, be trying to, you know, get that information from you. Um, that or a medic on site. Uh, additionally, um, if you end up, and though this is actually important for um, able-bodied folks as well, if you end up unconscious at any point, if you end up taking a real bad hit to the head and, and you are conked right out, um, having this information will be extremely important. Um, if they don't know what meds you're on, if they don't know what conditions you you have, uh, if you are allergic to any sort of medications or any other things, 
um, they, it might halt or postpone your treatment because all of a sudden they don't know that, oh, if, if they give you penicillin that you could die, right? Like some sort of, you know, um, terrible interaction or something, you the medics are going to need to know this. Um, so super, super important. So this is sort of just like a, a safety tip for everyone, I would say, but uh, if you have a medical condition, oh gosh, <laughs> so, so, so critical. And uh, I, I can vouch for this. I've, this is, <laughs> I've needed to use this pouch so many times um, over the past 14 years even. Um, seriously good stuff. I highly advise, um, do the thing. <laughs> Uh, next is hydration again, right? This stuff is great. Um, if you are using sports drinks, also drink water. It's actually super, super important. Um, you can't just only drink this. Um, you will run into issues. Um, so also have water, go back and forth. Um, but, uh, these are really great, um, especially for those that have, um, like hypoglycemia and things like that. I have hypoglycemia, so I drink this a lot, <laughs> right? Um, it's it's gonna be uh, important to know what is good for you, what you need, what you don't need, um, but also just, uh, it's important for, um, and again, this is just safety tips. Drink before, drink during, drink after. Um, dehydration affects everyone. Those with medical conditions can end up in worse situations if they do not keep hydrated. Um, but any normal able-bodied uh, individual will run into very serious issues if they do not keep hydrated. So keep hydrated. Again, if you're if you're watching this, please drink along. <laughs> um, now, if you're able, keep this on you. Um, keep keep your water or your sports drink on you. Um, <coughs> there are cool things. Uh, that you can get that uh, make it so that you can keep this right on your person, right? You got your, your pouch on you already. Why not also have your water bottle on you, right? This is just some elastic and a carabiner. Look at that. Hooks right on my belt. All of a sudden, no matter what happens, I have hydration on me. If I need to take a, a medication, I have something that I can take it with right there immediately. Um, I don't need to worry about getting back to base. I don't have to worry about someone else giving me their water bottle when I have, um, when I'm immunocompromised and cannot be drinking other folks' drinks. That's the thing that a lot of us, you know, um, with health conditions are, have to deal with. It's not really safe for us to be drinking from other people's bottles. Uh, germs are bad and dangerous. Um, so it's important to be able to also know which one is yours. If you are in a situation where you you do not have something, you cannot keep it on you, um, keep it nearby, but also have some sort of identifying marker on it so that you know which one is yours. Um, right, so if you do have a thing on it, right, I think pretty much at this point, everyone in my field knows if they see this, it's mine. <laughs> um, I've been wearing this long enough. Uh, so again, right, just random tips that can be useful for anyone. Um, yeah. Okay. So the next is temperature control. Um, there are a lot of conditions to where, um, being able to control your body temperature is really important. Um, but again, this is safety tips for just anyone also. Um, shade. <laughs> Real basic, real basic. Um, when you are not in a battle game, stay in shade. Don't just stay out in the open sun, right? Hats are great. I, I, I'm always very supportive of hats. <laughs> All right, um, they're, they're shade as you go. Uh, umbrellas also work as shade. Who knew? <laughs> uh, and trees, trees are fantastic. Um, any sort of tenting thing, a pavilion, if you have those, um, those are super, super useful to, um, all of your park members, really. Uh, so very much advise those things. And again, right, we're talking about hot summer days. Um, cooling vests are a thing. Um, there are very, very, um, 
there's lots of different types. <laughs> there's lots of different types and uh, some work better than others. And it's some is per personal preference. Some are more expensive than others. Uh, it's it's really what works within your price range and um, what physically feels good. If um, if that is an option that you want to explore, um, I would highly advise going for it. Um, right, sorry, just reading my notes. <laughs> um, also, like real simple thing in a pinch, grab a water bottle, put it right down your back, uh, put it all over your head and your neck. Um, just again, it's, it's a quick cool down method. You want to be able to control your body temperature. You want to keep it down. And when it spikes, you need to, to get it back down as quickly as you can. Um, though safely, you don't, um, <laughs> you do not want to, uh, switch your temperature too quickly or for those that have conditions, you can seize up and that can be all sorts of, you know, more issues for you. So what, what you have to do is, uh, it needs to be more gradual. Uh, remember just not to go like crazy ice water on you, um, immediately after being like really, really hot. Um, just, just be careful, careful how you do things. Um, those that have these conditions, this is, you know, uh, basic stuff, basic stuff. Um, oh yeah, this one. <laughs> So, uh, if you know what the product Sham Wow is, um, it's like this, this orange towel like material, um, almost looking kind of like felt, I want to say, uh, you can get it at so many different places, but like even Walmart has them. You can, and it doesn't have to be like name brand either. You can get them really, really cheap and you can get a giant sheet of these things. Uh, you, you cut them up into strips and, uh, you wet them and then you put it around your neck. Now the sham wow, how it works is it holds in water. So it makes it to where you're not going to get all like soaking wet and stuff. It's not going to be dripping over you the whole time. It just keeps a nice cold compress essentially on you. Um, and you keep it right around your neck, right? You can stuff it in your shirt a little bit. Um, I've found personally, this, um, really is really helpful for me. Um, so again, one of those things I advise, it doesn't drastically change your temperature. It's not like, uh, something that, um, is, is drastic or will cause, um, any sort of like shock response or, um, or seizing. It's just a nice cool thing just to keep things, um, level. Um, yeah. Okay. Sunblock. Um, again, this is a general safety, everyone thing. Uh, sunburns are not going to help anything anywhere. Um, if you have a million, um, health issues to begin with, throwing a sunburn on there is, is not going to be, uh, anywhere near helpful to you. Um, but even for able-bodied folks, the stuff is painful, it's uncomfortable, and it's, it's not good for you. So, uh, yeah, sunblock, sunscreen, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, but yeah, make sure that it's, it's a high enough, um, level as well, uh, and know how often you need to, uh, reapply it. So that's, that's a big one too. And, and make sure that you put it in the places that the sun is going to hit, right? Um, a lot of folks tend to miss like the top of their ear, their nose, even like their chin, um, their cheeks, cheeks are the big ones that also get missed. Um, uh, also right here on your sternum and the back of your neck, uh, those I've seen a whole bunch, uh, for those that don't wear hats and, um, even if you have hair, um, get, get that, the top of your, um, like if you have like a part, make sure you put it on there too, cause that will get hit. Um, yeah, just again, basic safety stuff. Um, oh, this is one. So garb, um, the materials that you use and the design of the garb that you are wearing also impacts things, right? Um, linen is, is really good with heat stuff, um, things like that. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not using materials that will keep heat in. Um, you want to make sure that you're not, you're not wearing types of garb where you are completely enclosed and, 
um, where you're just going to overheat. Where you're just going to overheat, right? Um, even though I'm wearing it, right? Uh, wearing all black, um, yeah, the sun's going to hit you. <laughs> Um, the sun's gonna hit you and it's gonna heat you up. Um, so, right, be conscientious of the colors that you're wearing, the types of material that you're wearing, and how, like, exposed you are, um, just to, again, be controlling, uh, that body temperature. Um, yeah, okay, so a couple, just a couple more things on that. Um, your class choice, um, if you are playing a warrior, it's it is hard to play warrior with zero armor um, because of the type of um, abilities you get tend to be a lot revolving around the armor um, and the type of you know the position that you're holding on your team, all of that. Um, and there's other classes as well that are, you know, heavy armored classes that um, can definitely rely on armor. Sorry, my cat. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, there we go. Every video I've ever done. Oh, there we go. This is true. <laughs> um, yeah, so, right, if you're, if you're going to be playing... Um, if you want to have impact in your class without having to wear armor, uh, try to focus on uh, classes that do not require armor. Um, focus on um, talking with your teammates to get magic armor so you don't have to wear physical armor, right? Um, there, are, there are different options for you. Um, so you can still play those classes, right? You just ask your buddy, um, Ask your buddy to hook you up with an enchantment. Because uh, that can solve that right there. Um, yeah. So, I think that's... for tips number one page. Um, I'm going to quickly go on the opposite spectrum of that. Um, still going with temperature control, but cold. Because um, cold temperature stuff is equally as bad. Um, so, on the opposite, you want to cover your skin. Um, if, if it is cold and wintry out there, do not have exposed skin. Right, buddy? Yeah, don't have exposed skin. Um, that's how you get frostbite. Uh, you will also, you will seize up. It will be very painful for those that have conditions with, uh, temperature, uh, control issues. So, avoid that. Know what you're doing there. Um, there are things that are like heated vests. The technology is is so cool right now, um, where you can have battery powered jackets and things. Um, so just there are options. Look into different um, technologies, different um, different things that you can wear. Um, old fashioned stuff, Under Armour, things like that, super useful. Um, yeah, again, guard materials. Uh, what you're wearing. Um, the patterns you're gonna you're gonna want to have things with layers also if you bundling up as you play you'll get warmer as you go being able to shed layers as you go to right to be controlling that body temperature um, is also important you don't want to get all sorts of insulated and then be like dying of heat because you packed in too much um, and the last one for that is uh, shelter. Um, be sure that you have a way out. That you are not just going to be stuck and exposed in the middle of um, a wintry situation with no way to warm yourself up. So um, at, at the very worst, talk to a friend that has a vehicle. And if you run into issues, um, especially for those with health concerns, again with the body temperature issues, uh, make sure that you can get into a vehicle, you can turn that heat on, and you can regulate your temperature again. Because um, that's going to be super, super important. Um, yeah. I'm going to quickly go to questions before I go into the end of this list, just because I see a lot of... Oh, no, maybe. Yeah, Joy. There you go. Um, oh, gosh. 
So, um, side note that we discovered last time, uh, because folks do chat in chat, um, it is very hard for me to find questions. So, uh, if you can tag me, um, I'll be able to find them a lot easier and make sure I don't miss anything, because I literally need to read every one of these things that is said to make sure that none of these are questions, which can take some time. So, apologies for the time delay as I read all the things. A lot of people allergic to penicillin, see? You never know, you never know. That was just one random medication. There's, there's so much. I, this is amazing. I'm so glad so many of you folks have come from so many different places. This is amazing. I seriously appreciate you're that you're here. Um, this is super, super awesome. Hello, all the people. Um, really amazing. Okay. Um, again, if you have questions, please um, feel free to put them either in the Discord chat or the uh, Twitch chat. Again, there is that 20 second delay, so uh, as standard procedure, I'm going to do the silly dance. And of course, ending with the jazz hands. Also, if, if, you're, if you're watching along, remember uh, to drink along. Remember to hydrate. Oh, a question! Yay! All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, question. As someone with medical challenges, what kind of support is helpful from the leadership of your park or kingdom? What can those people do and to make your life easier? Okay, so. Even though I said I was going to go to questions, uh, I have an entire card just on that question, so... Um, I'm not going to answer that right now, um, but I promise you I will answer that because it is super, super important and I will get to it. Um, so it is part of um, the course. I, I assure you I will be doing that. Um, is there any questions on anything I've covered so far, any of those topics? Um, otherwise, I will keep going. Okay, um, I'm going to go to the next section in this tip section before going to the next one. Um, and then again, I will check in with questions pertaining to what we've gone over so far. Um, but yes, I will be going over all of, <laughs> all of that right there. Fear not. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so again, there's a lot of folks with pain conditions, um, that play, um, I have some tips. Tips just for you guys. Um, that's the main thing I have to deal with, right? Uh, learn a lot of things. So I'm hoping maybe some of these things could also be useful to you. Um, adrenaline. Adrenaline is an amazing thing that your body does. It is, it is a natural painkiller. Um, but it is important that you know how it works. Um, if you are using adrenaline to get through a game, Two important things. The second you step onto that field, you're not going to have the adrenaline. Um, you're still going to be hurting. You're still going to have to get through that first push and, and it's not going to be there yet. But you can trigger it before you go. Um, and there's different ways you can do that. Um, one method I like to do, um, because it works really quick, um, you have like an open palm right here. <sighs> um, you also can do um, the side of your leg, 
Um, it is an adrenaline rush. <laughs> it hits you pretty quick. Um, the important thing is know your trigger spots. Make sure that you're not hitting anything that will cause you pain. Um, make sure that, you know, you're not doing any pressure point thing, right? You're not poking, you're not stabbing. Um, you're doing that open palm thing, right? Super open palm. Um, that might not work for you. That might not be the thing. Um, if, if that, you can't do that, go with the mothers, right? Run around a little bit, ditch a little bit. Um, do something that is physically you are able to do, something that you are physically comfortable with. Um, but it's really, really helpful if you can trigger that before you step onto that field. Before they say lay on, have that up. Now it is important that you keep it up. Okay, so this is the big, the big trick of it. You cannot let that energy go down. So, <clears throat> when people are having breaks and people are, are resting and stuff like that, um, don't just chill, lay down, and, and just walk around. Keep, keep up that energy, right? You keep busy, you keep moving. Um, you have to keep that up. You have to keep um, the adrenaline up because once it goes down, uh, it's like a crash. Uh, it will crash for you. And um, adrenaline is a good mask. It masks the pain. It's a good band-aid. But once you rip that off, um, the pain's going to set in. Your, your exhaustion's going to set in. And you're not going to be able to finish that second half. You're not going to be able to go into the next game. You're not going to be able to um, to use that adrenaline if you lose it. So you have to keep going. Now, um, okay, I'll go into the... I won't say it now because it's part of the, the next cue card. So I'm going to just hold it for now. But mm, someone remind me to get back on that adrenaline thing. Cause there's uh, an important thing for allies that, that need to know something about that. Um... Compression gear, braces, uh, K-tape, things like that. Um, things to support your muscles, your structure. Um, I will tell you right now, uh, my, my secret <laughs> right now, uh, I'm wearing something underneath this to keep my spine up. Um, this, right? I have chronic pain and illness. Uh, I wouldn't be able to just be sitting here um, otherwise. Uh, another thing, this is an illusion. I, I have, I am propped up. Can't really see it. I've got this all covered. We have lots of tips and tricks that we do um, to try to uh, kind of mask um, what we're going through. So, um, right, medication, all that kind of stuff. Um, there are there are things you can do. Uh, it's important to know what works for you. Um, so, compression gear is great, uh, especially if you're dealing with muscle fatigue issues. Um, I wear full body compression gear when I play, um, when I am able, um, and I wear it in sections too, um, because that way it's easier to put on, it's easier to take off. Because um, for those that aren't used to it, uh, it you can take something out of you to get it on and off. It's uh, it's a process, um, and you have to give your time, yourself time to be able to get it on and off. Um, so yeah, so I have sleeves. Um, I've got a short sleeve shirt of it. I have shorts, and I have like knee high socks basically, and they're all compression. Um, I have knee braces. I have a spinal brace. I have an Achilles brace. Um, and then I have K-tape. K-tape I also use. Um, that's surprisingly really great. Um, and it's, it's not bulky. It stays on pretty good. Um, if you go onto YouTube, uh, they have all sorts of um, instructional vision videos to explain um, how many squares of it to use in a single strip, the position that you need to put it in for um, the type of uh, body parts that you're putting it on and the type of condition that you're using for it. Um, so I find that to be really helpful. Um, can be a little expensive, so uh, there is that. Um, but if you're able to, uh, you know, especially if, if um, 
if you're using it for like a big event or something like that, I find that it's it's pretty worth it. Um, again, do what works best for you. Um, oh, yeah. So, even though, again, be careful with, you know, heat stuff, but if you have bare skin and you're taking a hit, that is, it's going to hurt more. <laughs> um, just a, a sword whack on bare skin, it's, oh, um, so having, having clothing, having padding, having, um, something <laughs> just kind of be that barrier that um that kind of uh cushioning for you for those hits um will help a lot um so that's just one thing it's gonna it's gonna hurt a lot more if you if you're going bare skin um if you have chain mail on bare skin uh that one's a <laughs> that one hurts that one's that one's an owie um Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, for those that do take pain medication, um, it is important to know how long it takes to get into your system. It's important to know how long it lasts. Uh, it's important to keep track of, um, when you took it, when you need to take it next. Um, one tip that I do is, um, I'll, I'll have my phone and I'll take a screenshot and that tells me exactly the time I took it. Uh, if I need to take it in six hours, I will set an alarm on my phone. I will have my phone in my pouch. So when I'm playing, all of a sudden that goes off. I'm like, oh, water bottle, pain meds, right? I can keep track of it. I can keep it going. Um, because if I, if I go down and I'm not um, on my pain meds, that's going to cause me more issues, right? Um, so basically if you know that you're going into a battle game you know that you're going to be uh going into like even just like your field day uh and it takes 30 minutes for for your pain medication to kick um make sure that you're taking it maybe 40 minutes before you go to field um just know how your body responds make sure that you know um you're you're pre-medding essentially um so that it's in your system and it's it's working so that um once you're actually out there, you're running around, you're getting hit, that you have something to help with the pain. Um, so that, that can be really helpful. Um, like I said before with the heating things, um, your, the class that you play, what you're wearing, your gear, um, all of that can also affect um, how much pain you will be in. Um, if you're having a, a harder pain day, um, do not play frontline fighter classes, <laughs> um, cause that's, you're going to be running around more. You're going to be hit, getting hit more. Um, and your team's also going to have unrealistic expectations of you. Um, so just be sort of conscientious of that. Um, playing range classes can be really helpful. Um, things that are backline, uh, magic classes are really good for that. Um, and if you do play melee classes, um, try to use stuff that in positions and classes to where you can be doing more of the, the back line, right? Um, for me, when I, when I do melee, I do anti-paladin. And what I do for that is I go on a, a defensive positioning and I use an eight foot pole arm, right? Crushing, breaking, feather light pole arm. So I'm not doing something that is, you know, exhausting to hold up, to carry, um, all of my gear, my armor is very light. Um, and I'm, I'm using battlefield positioning, right? I'm not going to be going after objectives that are on the top of the hill, right? I'm not going to be the person that's going to be running up and down that hill because I know that I'm going to gas myself real quick. Um, I'm going to be the person that's at our base defending. I'm going to find the one person on my team that is the linchpin and I'm going to protect them. They are not going to get hit while I'm, while I'm there. Um, that's the goal for me. Um, and I'm going to use that, that pole arm to keep distance. I'm going to keep folks off of me. I'm going to, um, avoid those battles altogether. Uh, a lot of folks have a sort of a misconception that the game is all about killing. Uh, the game is about crowd control. <laughs> um, oddly enough, a lot of game objectives 
have to deal with crowd control or achieving an objective that has nothing to do with killing whatsoever. Um, a lot of times it can end up being worse for you and your teammates if you're killing your opponents because all of a sudden uh, they're coming back with all of their armor and all their per life abilities, right? They've all of a sudden all of their spells are back, all of their equipment, their armor. Um, when you never needed to kill them in the first place and all of a sudden they were they had no armor, they had no abilities, and, and you just reset the clock for them. Um, so sometimes it's it's not best to kill them. So strategically uh, speaking, you can just keep them off of the game objective. Just crowd control, leg them and leave them, do whatever you gotta do, but keep them off. That's it, just keep them off, keep the distance, right? Um, you can also do this through uh, battlefield psychology. Uh, that's a fun one, right? Um, if if you are all some and you're not paying attention and you're just not there, um, you have made yourself a target. I, for me, I'd go, oh, that one. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> right? Um, because it's a quick kill for, for you know, in, in folks' minds. It may not be. That could be a total misdirect. But a lot of times, um, that can be... Um, that can be a really good target. So if you are positioned, you are focused, you are on folks, right? You're doing that, you know, that quick, that quick little stutter, right? Um, some folks will just be like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. And they'll avoid you. They'll actually avoid you. Um, try it. It's fun. <laughs> um, though I will just disclaimer, do not be needlessly aggressive. Do not try to bully anyone. Do not try to to um, aggress, scream in people's faces, and, and go nuts over. Right? Remember that this is a game. Remember that these are your friends, um, and and be sure to uh, keep checking in with them. Right? You might be super intimidating in it. Right? And and that oh man, that was a good point. Good job. Right? Break that sort of character and and make sure that they're good and they realize that. You're just in game mode and that you have nothing against them, that you're not, you know, trying to freak them out or bullying them or um, cause any sort of uh, COC6 violations, right? <laughs> um, so just kind of keep the mindset, understand um, where folks are mentally um, if you are using any sort of battlefield psychology. Um, do so with caution and consideration. Um, that's that. Listen to your body. Your body will tell you things. Um, it, it will start off subtly. There's tiny little cues that your body will tell you. Um, and when you have conditions, um, you are far more aware of them and you can hear them a lot better. Uh, a lot of times, um, folks that are new to conditions or, um, or injuries or illness, uh, they will miss the subtle communication and they'll blow past it and they'll keep pushing and um until their body shuts it down for you um that's an important thing to understand is that your body will give you cues and tell you okay hold up <laughs> you need to stop you need to rest you need to hydrate you need to uh have nutrition whatever the case might be um your body will tell you and they will tell you much sooner than uh, you realize. So it's going to be a matter of just knowing your body, picking up on the very subtle, subtle hints at first, um, and acting as soon as you get those subtle hints. Um, it's a lot of just being really aware of them um, because otherwise your body has sort of a defense mechanism. And that's when you're going to hit with things like fatigue and stuff like that. Um, if you don't stop, your body will stop you for you. Um, so it's important to, to pay attention to those signals. Um, and don't push yourself past your own limits. Um, things that will also help with that. Um, communicate with your team. Let them know what role you need to fill. Not just, oh, I'd like to do this, what you need to do, right? Um, if I'm going out and to, um, 
to a game and I'm not doing great and I'm playing anti-paladin, I will make it very clear to my team that I need to be on defense. That for me to participate in this game, I need to be on defense. Um, that is the role that I can do on this. Um, that is where I'm going to be most useful. Um, but understand that if, if you say I have to be on that offensive line, I have to be running folks down, um, I am not physically going to be able to do so. And that is an unrealistic expectation of me. And I will not be able to participate if that is the role that you are putting me into. Um, so communicate, be open with your teammates. Let them know what's happening. Um, also, when you are, when you're getting balanced, um, if you are in a situation to where uh, sometimes you have good days and um, uh, some days you'll have good days and um, you might end up being the linchpin for your team. Um, if you end up getting that sort of reputation and you have an off day, make sure that the person balancing the teams understands that you're having an off day and not to uh, make you be the game-changing person on your team. Um, if, if they put the best player on the other team and are going, okay, you're the best player on your team, and you cannot deliver that day, um, make sure that the person balancing teams knows that. Um, again, it has to do with unrealistic expectations and communication. Advocate for yourself. Um, we're going to go into advoca advocating, so um, I'll hold off on that. Um, yeah, also, uh, having someone... They could be somebody off-field. Um, they could be a Reeve. It could be somebody on your team. If you have a condition, if you have something, um, and maybe it's not something you're comfortable just going, you know, a loudspeaker and being like, everyone, I got this. <laughs> um, choose one trusted ally, one person that you are willing to just open up like a book to them and tell them everything. Tell them your concerns, tell them what can happen. Um, let them know where your medication is. Let them know um, if there is any point where if this, this, or this happens, you're not able to take it, that they would need to administer something, um, right? If you're allergic to something and you need an EpiPen, um, if you're like allergic to bees and, and you're going into a battle game, let somebody know, my EpiPen's on my hip, I'm allergic to bees. If you see me all of a sudden having this reaction, grab it, put it in this position. This is how you use it. If I cannot physically use it myself, right? Um, just have an ally, have a caretaker with you that can um, explain th stuff to others, that can help you in the moment, um, but it is very important that you do not keep all of that stuff to yourself because you will end up in a situation at some point where you will need assistance. Um, and if no one knows, no one's going to be able to help you. So it is super critical. I know that it's, it's a very hard thing to discuss with others and it is something that we we hide desperately, but it is important that we are open about it, that we, um, that we don't let that fear of judgment and um, the concern of other people's worry um, be a thing that puts us in a dangerous situation when otherwise it wouldn't need to be. Um, so just sort of keep that in mind. Um, yeah, the only other thing I have on this is, you know, again, knowing your limits, um, understand what you can and cannot handle, uh, make sure that you understand your condition fully, that you have talked with uh, a medical professional, that um, they don't sugarcoat what AmpGuard is, explain exactly what you do, um, how you are getting hit, um, the intensity of it, um, let them know everything. Um, to let them be able to tell you um, what is safe and what isn't for your condition, uh, for your injury, for your illness, whatever the case might be. Um, it is important that you have um, you have clearance from a medical professional so that um, you are not putting yourself in danger while doing this game. Um, okay, at this point, um, again, remember hydrate. If you're watching, drink along, and I will go to questions at this point for this section. Um, a 
Okay, so first question. How can those of us with disabilities help combat some of the misinformation and stigmas we face in the game? Uh, how can we bring about major change at our parks and with our game as a whole to improve the game for everyone? Um, again, that is literally the next card. <laughs> Um, so I will absolutely address that. Um, next question. Uh, how can we bring about greater awareness, support, and empathy without facing sympathy and pity? Ugh, yeah, that's something. Um, how do we combat this significant issue in our game? Any tips that might help this issue out of games well? Yes, okay. So, um, again, I will be covering that. That is the next, that is the next topic. Um, Oh, I love my archery, yeah. <laughs> um, yep, I'm gonna have to run around so much. I stand next to the tree and shoot me, yep. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, related to the issues of adrenaline and overall endurance, could you talk about tournament styles? Uh, would you be able to enter a tournament at all? If so, what could the organizers do to make the tournament accessible to you? Uh, your brackets, Ironman style versus bracket style. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, uh, if you are going to do tournament fighting and you have um, a chronic pain issue, something of that um, nature, some sort of limitation, um, Understanding how much you can do in a day is going to be critical. Um, if you do a tournament, that might be the only thing you do that entire day. Um, and you have to basically, um, you prep for the tournament. You only do the tournament and you rest as soon as the tournament is done. Uh, as much as we want to do more, as much as we want to push ourselves and um, be able to experience everything like everyone else. Um, again, it's knowing your own limitations, knowing what you can handle. Um, tournaments can be a tricky thing for um, accommodations um, due to the way that they're formatted, uh, due to um, how they affect things like Warlord and Knighthood, um, it can get messy. Um, I would say that um, there are there are some styles that are a lot easier um, to handle physically, and um, if you can talk to the event runner, you can talk to your monarchs, um, you can talk to um, your champion, whoever's running it, and um, if they are not dead set on on a style that's like you're fighting every single person and you're going multiple rounds and right there's there's so there's some tournaments I cannot do just because it's it's too much fighting um and at some point I know that I'll have to bow out um if they are not dead set on doing one of those styles talk with them see if they're willing to to do something um, that requires less. Um, a lot of it is advocating and, ah, this is the next, it's the next card. <laughs> um, a lot of it is advocating and communication and expressing what you can and cannot do and asking what they are willing to do. Um, but communication, everything, everything, everything. Um, know what you need and express it. Um, also, um, most tournaments do not require that you fight all of um, the brackets. Um, you, you might only be able to do one bracket. Um, you might only be able to do a couple. Uh, it's okay to not do them all. It's okay to not um, push for that top spot sometimes. Um, Sometimes it's worth it just to participate at all. Um, you, you have to be forgiving of yourself. Um, I think that's, that's the hardest thing. Um, be okay with yourself. 
um, understand that whatever your best is, is good enough. Um, and do not have unrealistic expectations of yourself and do not let others put um, unrealistic expectations on you. And um, that communication is going to be huge. And I'm going to go, I'm going to fully go into that, I promise. Um, Um, in regards to signals, also um, having foresight. Don't go to field starving, hydrate before a game, wear sunscreen, sit in the shade. Yep. And that's what we, we discussed previously. Um, yeah. You gotta prep. Um, you have to prep for for everything. Um, don't go to a field or an event uh, and then go, okay, what should I do? The battle game's gonna start in 10 minutes. What do I need to do to make sure that I'm in a healthy situation to go and do the thing? You're too late. You're already too late. Um, that's gotta be all pre-planned and, and pre-taken care of uh, well before you ever head to field. Uh, before you ever head to that event, everything's got to be pre-planned. You gotta, you gotta have a lot of foresight, um, and you you have to be prepped. Um, time is everything, and it is really, really, really crucial um, that you um, you plan everything out and you're giving yourself enough time. Give your body the time that it needs to have everything that it needs, so that you can be in the best situation and you can last as long as you can. If you're playing along, please drink. <laughs> hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Um, if there's any other questions about what we've already covered, um, I'm, I'm gonna get to that, to all of the other questions that have already been um, asked. Again, a 20 second delay, so we danced. Do you, do you? And again, any with those jazz hands, a couple of jazz hands. Um, Okay, here we go. Advocating! Um, for those that don't know, there is something called the Spoon Theory. Um, it was created by a, um, a woman that I believe had lupus. Um, and she was sitting in a diner with her friend and um, was trying to explain um, what it's like a day in her life. Um, and she, she wanted to grab an example and was looking around and all of a sudden she just saw a bunch of spoons. So she grabbed up a bunch of spoons. Um, I will demonstrate with some random note cards. These are spoons. <laughs> We're LARPers. We have an imagination. We're going to pretend these are spoons. Um, and what she explained to her friend was that uh, due to her condition, she only had so many spoons in the day. Now each spoon represented a task. And once she was out of spoons, that was as much as she could do for that day. She had to stop, she had to lay down and rest, and that was it, nothing else. Um, now, what folks usually don't realize is the amount um, that a spoon can carry is, can be very small. Um, this was me getting out of bed today. This was me putting on my clothes today. This was me feeding myself today. And this was me taking a shower. I'm out of spoons. That's it. That's all that I was capable of in a day. And I did it. And that was the start of the day. And it's already gone. Now I'm in bed for the rest of the day. Um, I can't do any more than that. So if I need another meal that day, someone else has to make it. If, uh, if there is a job that has to be done, it's not getting done. Um, if I have any sort of task, any other, uh, if I'm supposed to meet up with a friend, anything like that, nope, not happening. Um, it is important to know how many spoons you have. Um, it is important to know how many spoons you have left. Uh, for, for communicating and um, advocating for yourself, 
it's a really good tool um, to be able to explain um, your situation um, and your condition um, to folks that would not normally understand such things. Uh, it's a good visual, it's a good way for them to kind of grasp. And when you have uh, that person on the inside that knows um, your thing, you can express your situation subtly in spoons. Um, if you say you're out of spoons, any other spoonie is going to know exactly what that means, um, and they'll help you out right then and there. They'll go, oh, oh, yep, yeah, okay, <laughs> and they'll start moving. Um, what do you need? What do you need moved? What do you need? Do you need help getting somewhere? Um, have you eaten? Right? There's, um, there's certain, like, uh, steps that just instantly somebody will just go into if they, they know. Um, if you give that cue, right? Um, if somebody, you know, checks in with you and you're like, I got, like, one spoon left, right? Okay, cool. We'll do this. Call it a day. Um, it is very important that you keep track of your spoons, that you do not use spoons that you do not have, because that will take from the next day. If you take from that, then all of a sudden, uh, you don't have enough spoons for that day, right? Um, if, yes. They'll keep disappearing and until uh, you're spending three days in your bed, not moving, because you used all of your spoons for that day three days ago. Um, so very, 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 very important. Um, it's important to keep track of your spoons. Um, and it's also important to communicate with your caretaker or anyone else that is an ally, a friend, um, how many spoons you got left. Because um, once they're gone, they're gone. They're gone. Um, so it's that's super important. So spoon theory, super helpful. Um, when you have... When you have a condition, you have any sort of medical um, needs, <sighs> tell your monarch, um, tell your officers. Uh, and the reason for this is uh, if you are medically cleared to be able to play, um, it is going to be very important that they know. Uh, because you might get into a situation where you try to explain to a reeve and they knee jerk on you and they go, you're experiencing pain. No, get off the field. No, we're not having this conversation. Get off. You're done. You're done. You're sit. No. Where you're just like, I've been doing this for 14 years. Why is all of a sudden today any different? It's not. And it's unrealistic. And it's, it's just somebody not understanding, not willing to listen, and somebody knee jerking. And we deal with that. Um, but if your officers know and are fully aware of the situation, they know that you're medically approved, they know your situation, what you have, um, they can step in and, and advocate for you. They can speak on your behalf and go, whoa, 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 dude, no, seriously, this person's been approved, this is what's going on, right? Because the really crappy situation is that um, some folks will disregard you, they'll knee jerk and then they'll, they'll stop communicating. But that able-bodied officer over there, they'll actually sit and listen to them. Um, that's a terrible situation in this game that needs to change. Um, and it is, it is annoying, it's infuriating, and, and it shouldn't be a thing. So, if you are a Reeve, this is something you need to know. Um, for situations to where... Um, you, you trust your Reeves, and you know them, and they know you, they know the situation. Um, let, them, let them know if you have any concerns for that battle game. Um, let them know if there's any way that they can help you. If, um, if you do have your pouch with all of your ER stuff, right? Um, let them know if something happens and I become unconscious, all of my stuff is here. So somebody in an official capacity knows that all of the information is on your person, that you are prepped, and that your medication's on you, you are approved to play, that um, if there is an emergency situation, which can happen to any able-bodied person, um, that all of your stuff is on you, that you are prepped and ready to go. Um, also, um, if you need accommodations in a game, this is who you're going to be talking to. Um, 
usually the person will will be reaving is the person that um, a lot of times will be the person that is um, choosing the game that, that you're doing. They might have even been the person that designed the game. Um, and there might be just something, one particular thing that is too much for you. Um, like, I can fight at base and I can last that whole game, but if I die at base and have to walk all right, half a mile through the woods to go to a respawn point to walk all the way back, I can't do that. <laughs> Um, explaining that to, uh, to your head reeve, the person that's balancing the game, that is, um, choosing the rules, um, try to get those accommodations, um, so that you can still play. Because it might be something as simple as you have, you can do your respawn at base, uh, you just tack on more time so that it's fair, right? You're gonna make the, um, the accommodation of it would normally take you this many minutes to, you know, a normal person to walk there and how long that they'd be sitting there and how long it would take to walk back. That's the amount that you'd tack on to your normal death count and you do it at your base, right? Um, now I will say there's going to be times to where um, they might overdo it and all of a sudden give you a real game breaking uh, thing. <laughs> just be sort of um, aware of it and don't abuse it. Um, you you are getting accommodations to make things balanced. So if you notice that things aren't balanced, right, um, do your due diligence and um, try to make things as fair as possible. Um, because if if you can do that and you don't abuse and use loopholes and stuff to give yourself a um, a higher um, higher percentage of victory than, than you ought to have, uh, put it that way, I guess, um, then it is more likely that you will get accommodations in the future and that your opponents won't get super salty and that your teammates won't get super jelly. Um, it's important that everyone's still having fun and that things are equal. Um, so just random thing, but please do not be afraid to ask for accommodations. Um, tell them what you can do, tell them what you can't do. Uh, if you have a particular game mechanic in, in your head that you think would be fair and um, useful to you, try to pitch that. Um, but yeah, otherwise, folks are usually pretty good about it. Um, I'll, I've had pretty good experience myself. Um, and most often than not, folks want to help. Um, so again, it's advocating for yourself. It's having that open line of communication. Um, it's going directly to the source. It's going to the person that has um, the uh, being able to affect change and being able to uh, accommodate for you. Go directly to that person, talk with them, explain stuff. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, so that is Reeves, GMR, uh, Champions, uh, Warcrafts. Um, the other folks that you need to have uh, that open line of communication with is your teammates, um, and even possibly your opponents, um, to let them know if you are getting accommodation, what it is and why. Um, just having that open line of communication, they're like, oh, okay, cool, right? Um, if you're getting some game-breaking thing and they don't know why, then they're gonna get super salty and you don't need to deal with that, because um, you shouldn't have to. Um, but yeah, again, right? Have have your teammates know what you can do, what you can't do. Um, make sure that they're not having unrealistic expectations of you. Um, let them know that uh, how they can be helpful to you. Um, what is going to be the best role for you on the team um, due to what you are capable of doing. Um, and again, right? Where your meds are, where your list is. Um, any special instructions, if they notice something, if you are in a situation and you need help, um, those pouches are really, really good. Um, I cannot advocate for them more. Um, just having something that has all of your stuff in it just makes everything a million times easier. Um, the very last card of this class is uh, for allies and advocates. Um, and, and that 
very much needed change that we need in this game. So before I go into this last topic, um, I'm going to go to questions. Um, anything that we have covered so far, um, please throw me those questions and I will answer them. Um, again, just remember that there is a 20 second delay. Um, there's not a delay, however, in Discord. If you want a quick thingling there, you can throw me a message there. Again, if you could just tag me, that'll make things super easy for me. A lot of spoons only have knives. I love that saying so much. <laughs> um, oh, so bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this shout out. Um, small plug. While we're talking about advocacy, diversity team at AmpGuard.com uh, will get a message to the AI division and inclusion advocate. Uh, if your self-advocacy isn't getting you help, uh, the DNI advocate can help advocate for you. Really good, super, super important info right there. Um, if you have issues advocating for yourself, there are folks in this game that will advocate for you. I will advocate for you. <laughs> um, this, that's an open offer right there, um, especially for folks that are in the Nine Blades. Um, let me know if you have any issues, if you um, have any problem advocating for yourself, you need help, um, if I'm ever at an event with you, or ever in a situation, um, I am more than happy to help and help with that line of communication. Um, but yes, the diversity team is fantastic and um, they are good folks to advocate for you and to help with that. So, okay, this is it. Last topic of the night. Allies and advocates. Okay. Um, there's a lot of us. <laughs> um, there is a surprising amount of us. Um, those with disabilities, with health concerns, with injury, with illness, um, it's a shocking amount. Um, there are folks with learning disabilities in this game, um, that you would not otherwise know about. I have a learning disability. Um, reading and writing is difficult for me. Um, just reading all these things, that is a challenge. Um, but unless I tell folks, they usually don't know. Um, and there's lots of folks that will, will, will judge you on the, when they do. And, uh, it's not cool. <laughs> it's, um, it's not okay. There's a lot of discrimination. There's a lot of ableism in our game. And, uh, that needs to change. So, um, the first step with that is listening. Um. We want to be able to tell you guys folks things. Um, we want to be able to be open about these things. Um. But there is a stigma. There is a stigma. You are treated differently once, once folks know. Um, for those with, with um, chronic pain issues, uh, if you're in a tournament and somebody finds out, they start pulling shots. Um, they'll, they won't hit you as hard. Uh, they'll, they'll treat you like you are made of porcelain and um, treat you with kid gloves. When all you want is for them to treat you like everybody else. Uh, if you weren't prepared to take hits and you weren't prepared to fight in that tournament, you wouldn't have stepped up to do it. Um, so uh, making assumptions is, is an issue. Um, in moments when things are happening, um, please do not assume what is going to be best for them. Uh, please do not assume um, what is helpful, what is not. That you know their body is more than they do. Um, 
don't try to take control of their situation. Um, in, in moments of like an attack of some sort or whatever the case might be, um, it can be a terrifying moment to have a loss of control. Don't make it worse by taking even more control away from them. And that moment, just be present. Ask what you want them, like what, if you're going to them, go, what would you like for me to do? How can I help you in this moment? Don't berate them with questions. Um, don't panic. Do not call 911 unless they approve of you doing so. Um, the only exception is basically if they're unconscious um, that or they cannot communicate at all. Um, if, if they are in a, a dire, deadly situation, um, that is the exception. But otherwise, don't knee jerk, don't panic, don't freak out, don't go telling everybody, don't get a crowd, don't uh, spread rumors of, oh man, did you hear that person went down? Ooh, we're not sideshow freaks, please don't draw attention to our situations. Um, we do something called masking. Um, masking is when you hide um, what you're feeling. You hide your pain, you hide um, as much as you can. And sometimes you can't. Some conditions you can't. You just can't. Um, and for some conditions, when you get to a certain amount of pain, uh, you can't hide it. Um, but we will hide as much as we can, right? all the stuff that I'm wearing underneath to keep my spine up, how I've gotten all those hidden pillows keeping myself up right now. I am doing that right now. The, the medication I'm on right now to do this class, this is me masking. Um, the amount of discomfort or pain I'm in right now, I am masking. Um, we have to do that to survive. Um, we have to do that for our mental health as much as our physical health. Um, because if you step outside your door um, and people can see uh, the pain on your face, the discomfort or the anxiety or whatever um, your situation is, they just panic and pick up the phone and all of a sudden, oh my god, oh my god, who do I call? Oh my god, 911? Yeah, no, no, they're, they're free. Like, oh my god, please. <laughs> like, you're going to make it a million times worse. Um, Please understand, especially for those of us that have chronic conditions, chronic means continuous, always. It doesn't stop. It doesn't get better. Um, oh, you look better today. Oh, I, I hope, oh, so, so you're better now. You don't have the thing anymore. No, <laughs> no, I, I'll have this for the rest of my life. I will always feel pain. There isn't a moment that I don't feel pain. Um, it's just a matter of how much um, I push through it, how much I choose not to surrender to it, and how I choose to live my life, um, and that I choose not to live my life in a bed on, you know, hyped up on pain meds all the time. Um, that's a choice, but it is a painful one, and that is something that I have to deal with. Um, I cannot deal with that if everyone around me is freaking out all the time, going, oh my god, they're in pain, I don't know what to do, oh my god, oh, somebody get somebody, get somebody else, oh no, no, you get that person, no, please don't, please don't, <laughs> please don't, um, half this card is under a category salt, says, please don't, <laughs> um, be calm, be quiet, don't draw attention, be chill, because that is going to be the best thing you can do for them, um, let them be in charge of their situation. Let them hold the reins. Um, Cause really they're gonna be the only ones that actually really know what what they need in that moment. What will be most helpful. Um, just listen, just need you to listen. Um, if you are a Reeve, if you are um, in office, hi buddy. Um, just listen, uh, don't knee jerk, don't freak out. Listen, what we need most is for you to listen.
Um, oh. Yeah, again, um, if, if a medical professional has, has said that what they're doing is not going to cause injury, it's not going to cause damage, um, please trust that they know their bodies and that um, for those that do have, you know, pain conditions, they're going to be in pain regardless of whether or not they're going out in that field. That is, that is life. That is normal, everyday to day life. Getting out of your bed is painful, right? Putting out your clothes is painful. No matter what you do, you're going to feel pain. So you not going onto the field is not going to stop you from experiencing pain. Um, understanding that is daily life, that is day to day, every moment to moment, that is what this is. Um, so making a big deal out of it, freaking out, panicking, telling somebody, okay, your doctor said you can play, but you know what? Me? No, you can't play. Um, don't doom them to have to be miserable laying in their bed, not getting physical therapy, um, not having um, the mental break of seeing other people, of going out of their homes, um, socializing, getting fresh air. Um, because if, if you do that knee jerk thing, I will tell you right now, they're gonna stay in their homes, they're gonna stay in their beds, they're gonna stay on their pain meds, they're not gonna talk to anyone, they will be stuck. And um, please don't do that to, to folks, needlessly, um, please don't. Um, again, don't call 911 without consent. Um, also, if you are in a situation to where you do need to go to the hospital, um, some interesting information um, that most able-bodied folks don't know about uh, ERs um, and um, and other folks that just don't have a lot of experience being in them. Um, TV shows very much have a terrible... Um, what they show, show is not even remotely realistic to what an ER is. Um, when you go to an ER, uh, you have most likely about minimum three hour wait till a doctor ever sees you. Uh, before you're ever approved for pain medication or, or nausea medication, anything, literally anything um, that is being put in your body, um, you got about a three hour wait once you get there. Um, if you're lucky, it can be six hours, it can be nine hours. Um, so if you're panicking and you're rushing and you're freaking out trying to get this whole thing rushed to get them to the hospital, um, if it is not a situation where like they're bleeding out, they're having a heart attack, there isn't like a, an immediate thing, just like, oh wow, the pain's just really bad and you know what, their pain meds aren't doing it and they, they need some extra help. Um, don't freak out, don't panic and don't rush them. Um, because the weight that they're going to have is going to be really significant. Um, also, it, it's not like you're going there for a cure. It's not like they're going to, um, their focus is diagnosing, diagnosing and medicating for long-term things. Their main goal is um, life-saving stuff. Um, they will save your life, make sure you're stable, and get you out of there as quick as possible. Um, so it's not like, um, it's not like they're looking to admit you and, and have a long stay and, uh, just do every test under the sun and, um, make sure that, that you're on pain meds and, and, and nausea meds and all like, or the sailing drip and all that for as long as, as you feel comfortable being in there. No, they go, are you stable? Get out. Um, cause they need the beds. They need the beds for the next person. That is an immediate situation. Um, you being in a bed, if you're not in a critical, you're dying position could mean that you're holding up a bed for somebody that is bleeding out, that is having a heart attack, whatever the case might be. Um, they're just trying to get you out as soon as possible and they are packed. Um, so it takes several, several hours. Um, and again, they can't give you anything, um, uh, beforehand before you see that doctor. Um, because they don't know what you're allergic to. They don't know, um, exactly what your condition is. 
um, what is going to be helpful, what's going to be um, just hindering you more. Um, especially if you pass out or something where they can't communicate with you. Um, that prolongs everything because, you know, again, right, look how many people just, you know, said they were allergic to penicillin. Um, they can't risk giving you something that will kill you when you weren't in a dire situation going in. Um, so please understand that when you call 911, that it isn't a quick, easy process, that um, it's not going to be a cure for them. It's going to be just... <sighs> Don't freak out about their daily life. <laughs> um, for, for most of us, this is daily life. And you panicking and, and having us go to the hospital against our will um, for an everyday uh, feeling is... Uh, completely unnecessary. Also, um, most cases, if you call an ambulance and they got to drive there, uh, there's a cost to that. Even if you have insurance, uh, there is a, there's a bill for that. Um, so if, if other people go and there's parking fees, um, there's not everything is covered and depending on what country you're in, oh gosh. <laughs> um, right. We're fortunate being in Canada. Um, the states are not as lucky. Uh, if you're at an event in the states and you force somebody with a chronic pain issue to go to the hospital needlessly, um, you might have just cost them a couple grand um, just to go there for no reason. Um, it's important that you know the consequences um, and understand that even though you're trying to be helpful, if you're not listening and you don't know what is best for them, you can be causing far worse issues for them. So again, listen, stay calm, stay cool, don't panic, and listen. Always, always just listen. Because um, that's what we need. What we need is for folks to listen. Um, yeah. So there's going to be other, other conditions and other things that you're going to see. Um, mental health is a huge thing in our community. Um, if somebody's having a panic attack, Again, don't crowd them. Don't have a bunch of people come over. Um, don't berate them with questions. Just sometimes all they need is to know that someone's there for them and that if they need something, you're there. Um, it can be more anxiety inducing if you start badgering them with questions. Um, don't make a situation worse than it is. Um, it's, again, if you're able to have those conversations, not in those moments of panic and dread and anxiety and, um, you know, those high pain attack moments, um, just so, um, you're able to kind of communicate what your needs are, um, what will happen in those moments, um, what will help and, um, it's, it's hard when the first time you ever breach that conversation is in that high panic, high intensity, oh my god moment, right? Um, that's not the best time to have that conversation. Um, a lot of it is going to be, um, and they're going to know in their head, okay, these are the steps. I need this to happen for this to happen, this for, and then this. Once this happens, I'm good. I'm in a stable condition. I'm good to go. Um, but if you're trying to communicate those four steps and they're asking you 10 unrelated questions, they're making such a scene when you're trying to be as discreet and you're masking and you're hiding as much as you can. And all of a sudden you got 10 people around you and then they're all asking questions. Um, you've just made that situation exponentially worse for that person. That's going to be more stress. That's going to put them in a worse situation. Um, for those that are having like anxiety attacks, things like that, you will escalate the situation so much worse than it ever needed to be. Um, again, it's about communication. It's understanding, um, what their needs are. It's not overwhelming them. It's not bringing attention. Um, please keep medical information confidential. Um, 
If somebody comes to you and is opens up to you and tells you what their situation is, do not spread that information. Um, consider it to be need to know and that um, it is a breach of trust and it is a breach of, um, I'm going to say, morality issues um, even so much um, for you to spread that information. Again, we still have this terrible stigma in our community um, that, that folks like us shouldn't play, that we shouldn't be here, um, that we are a danger to ourselves when we're not, um, that we, that there's no way to accommodate for us, that um, if you're not just a high impact, high sporty person, um, there is the place for you here. Um, that needs to stop. That really needs to stop. Um, we're here. We're everywhere. Um, and we have to keep hiding so long as there are folks like that that have that horrible negative stigma and misinformation and spreading that um, and not listening and panicking and um, telling folks that they're not welcome, that, um, that they shouldn't do things, that, that you know better than them. Um, and what they need in, in situations, please, please, please listen, try to be understanding, keep an open mind, um, and, and keep the communication open. Let them know that you are an advocate. Let them know that you're there to support them, that you're there to listen, that, um, whatever they need you will accommodate, you will be there for them. Um, let them hold the reins of their life. Let them stay in control of their own situation. Um, if they are not going to be causing injury or harm, um, please trust them to understand their own bodies. Um, please let their choices be their own. Um, like repeat stuff repeat stuff um it's just there's so many folks that don't listen and there's so many folks that need jerk and it's been a whole lot of years dealing with that um and a lot of years of watching other people deal with it and it's needless it's just needless um also just um one more thing on the the masking thing um there's a lot of conditions also to where, um, right, you're using things like adrenaline, you're using painkillers, you're using braces and things like that. Um, and it's kind of like a facade thing, it's smoke and mirrors, and um, it only works so long. It's a band-aid. Um, so when they're out in the field and they're doing a battle game, they're doing stuff and they're being active one minute, and then the next, you see them using a cane, a walker, a wheelchair. Um, they're not able to do stuff. Um, that's super common and normal. Um, that's how a lot of these conditions work. Um, they have band-aids and then those band-aids fall off. Um, they're not faking it. Um, they do not want your pity. They do not want, this is not some sort of cry for attention. Dear God, it's the opposite. We don't like people to pull attention to it. Um, we don't like folks to focus on it, treat us differently. Don't pity us. Dear God, please don't. Um, that is the last thing we want. Treat us like you would treat anyone else. Um, because that is how we're able to talk about it. That is how we are able to be open and honest, is by us being treated like everyone else. We are all players of this game. We are all amp guarders, no matter the level of intensity that we are involved. It doesn't matter if you are on the field pushing or if you're in a wheelchair playing color that day. We are all equals. And as soon as we can get to that point in this game, um, this will be an inclusive, wonderful place that I know it can be. Give us that chance, please. Um, we need this place as much as everyone else, probably more.
to be frank. Um, and sometimes we are pushed out and sometimes we are pushed away. We are a family and we're a community and we need to stick together. And um, this is a topic that is hard to discuss. Um, this is hard to discuss. Um, but if we don't talk about this and it becomes that elephant in the room and we're not um, willing to stand up and advocate for ourselves and communicate and advocate for others, um, this will never change. We'll always be in this situation and um, be brave. Be brave. Um, we can do this and we can do it together. And if you can't, that's okay. Talk to those around you that are willing to stand up and, and paint that target on themselves. Um, we'll go to bat for you, okay? Just let us know. Let us know what you need. Because um, we'll do it. We will, we will do the best that we can for you. Um, I'm here for you. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of folks that are too. So um, reach out. And, and please know that there is a super safe space in this game. Um, and that anyone else in um, this community that has um, any sort of medical situation, um, they're, they're going to be the, the biggest support and the greatest allies um, other than folks that, you know, are able-bodied. Um, we're here and we will listen um, and, and I'm going to do my best to keep um, advocating and keep this um, this topic up front and um, communicate and uh, let folks know what's going on um, as much as I can so you have that <laughs> as, as much as that is um, oh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot. Um, I'm going to go to questions at this point. Um, that is the bulk of it. So if there's any questions, um, now's the time. Please, um, go ahead and, and shoot me a message in either Discord or, um, or Twitch chat. Again, please, uh, tag me so that, um, it is easier for me to see that, um, because it's very hard to... And I've learned disability. I'm just gonna be super open. I'm I'm a I am an open book about this kind of stuff. So um, that's hard for me to read. So seeing the tags lets me know that there's a question, and I can much easier time going about that. Okay, um, here's a question. <clears throat> Autism spectrum disorder has been a tricky issue only because it can come with social... Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, I'm going to totally misread this and I deeply apologize. Um, with social defici deficiencies? I'm not sure, sorry. Um, that are seen as uh, off-putting um, to neurotypical folks. I have ASD. Where do you personally feel the balance should lie in supporting someone with those social uh, defects uh, and mitigating the discomfort of players at large? Okay, that's a good one. Um, yes. There are so many folks on the autism spectrum. So many folks. Um, a lot of folks have this sort of idea in their head that um, autism is like the end of the spectrum to where um, you're nonverbal, um, even possibly like aggressive or, and folks don't really understand where that aggression comes from and why, um, which 
you know, for those of us that are fully aware of that situation, um, it comes from the very, um, very obvious place. Um, but unfortunately, those things aren't known and, and they're not um, understood. Um, but spectrum, the autism is a spectrum. It was a huge spectrum. And um, there's a lower, lower end of that um, from really extreme cases to where you probably would not know they have autism at all. Not at all. Um, unless you know the signs, you're aware of the condition. Um, there can be issues with um, social things. Um, being able to read social cues. Um, again, it's a communication thing. It's an advocate thing. Um, if you let folks know that that is an issue for you, um, someone tells you that they have a, an issue, um, they have a condition, they, um, they are autistic. Um, be reasonable. Um, understand that um, it is a disability and it is not a choice and they are not actively trying to be difficult, that they're not trying to be offensive or uh, mean. Um, how they understand how to communicate and how, um, how they perceive things, um, it's not always a choice. Um, and just as you would be accommodating to somebody with a broken leg. Um, it is important to understand that, that folks with autism, um, as well as other learning disabilities, that there, there are accommodations made for them and that folks are understanding. Um, please don't judge them. Um, please don't be overcritical of them. Um, don't knee jerk. <laughs> I, almost like across the board for just almost every single medical thing I can think of right now, the worst thing you can do is knee jerk. Um, you can't be understanding if the first thing you do is freak out on them. Um, and, and you don't listen. You don't understand what they're dealing with and why. Um, listen, don't knee jerk, understand just be understanding. Um, the only way we learn is by listening. Um, so personal favor to, uh, to me, please. Um, understand that that is a thing that a lot of folks in our community are dealing with. And um, before, there's a lot on, on forums too, um, before you jump on somebody and go, how dare you? Um, did you really just say that? Uh, do you mean to say, uh, before you have those responses, um, think for a second, go, is this person autistic? Does this person have a learning disability? Does this person have um, difficulties with social cues, with, um, with language? anything. There's so much. There's just so much. Um, take a beat. Try to see things through their eyes. Try to understand what they could be feeling. Uh, try to understand um, and relate to their situation. Try to be in their shoes for just that split second. It's all you need. Just take a beat. Just take a beat before you reply to anything online. Um, and understand that your words can be hurtful. Um, and we messed up. I messed up. Tons of time. Um, but own up to it. Apologize. Um, and try to do better. Uh, that's the best we can do. We can just try to be better. Um, so understand that whenever you're communicating with somebody else, you're, you're, um, you're in a situation, um, take a beat. Take a beat. Don't panic. Don't need jerk. And um, 
try to be compassionate, understanding in all situations, because you never know what somebody's dealing with, and you never know what their situation is. Because um, it's more folks than you will ever realize. <laughs> um, hope that covers that. Um, next question. Yeah, oh gosh. Um, masking is also extremely exhausting. Masking is so exhausting. Oh my gosh, guys, so exhausting. So exhausting. Um, it would be just an amazing, beautiful world if we didn't have to do this. <laughs> we didn't have to mask if we could just be our natural selves and... Oh gosh, it's exhausting. Um, and one thing to understand about masking is it's not it's not like folks trying to be um, maliciously deceitful or anything to you um, a lot of times um, there's like two main reasons uh, that you'll see with it is um, you don't want to be judged and treated differently and people to freak out at you and knee jerk and do all these things that are gonna put you in a worse situation if they find out um, so part of that is defensive um, and, and it's a way to protect yourself from others, um, but also another reason why we do it is to protect you guys. <laughs> um, when you have situations to where folks can't help you and um, things are what they are, especially like if you're having an attack of some sort and it's literally just like, I took my meds, now it's just waiting, but I'm gonna be writhing in pain for the next, you know, half an hour to an hour and there's nothing you can do. You have to stand there and watch it. Um, we don't like um, our loved ones um, to feel helpless. We don't like even strangers um, to have to watch you suffer, to, to have to watch you be in pain and discomfort and know that they can't do anything to stop it. Um, we, we understand the feeling of helplessness and we, and our loved ones have to deal with that on a daily basis. They have to. I have to watch us suffer and they can't do anything and it hurts them. It hurts them. Um, and we don't want people to be hurting. We know what hurt feels like. Um, please understand that when we're masking, um, a lot of that is for you. So um, please don't judge folks that, that do it. Please don't um, assume that it's, it's a malicious, deceptive thing. Um, it is it is with good intention and it is um, it is a necessity for us to exist and survive in this community and in this world. So um, that's just a thing. And yes, it is, it is exhausting. Um, it's a lot to keep up. Yep, this is a good one. Um, in regards to handling situations, that's why we have medicrats. Um, they should be trained in this. Uh, most are, I am. Baron says he is. Thank you for being trained. Um, people should be seeking out a medicrat or uh, persons dedicated, uh, persons dedicated care person. Yes. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of events where um, they're like, oh, this isn't, we don't need a medicrat, we're not doing anything crazy. Um, medicrats can be super helpful for the most mundane type of um, situations that, um, there, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of folks with a lot of medical things and um, it doesn't necessarily need to have some sort of catastrophic trigger to um, be in a situation where you need medical aid. Um, and, oh gosh, Medicrats are great folks to be able to talk to and confide in um, because they are trained in this. They, they, know, um, they know the basics. They know um, the situation. They're involved with that scene. Um, and they're most likely going to be the most understanding folks. Um, there, there's actually a surprising amount of them that have medical things themselves. Actually, that's um, 
that's a little little fun fact right there. Um, I've dealt with a lot of a lot of metacrats that um, that have stuff, and most people don't know about them. Um, so we'll bless you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, but there's also there's a lot of folks that um, do not have any issues whatsoever. Um, but they have a lot of knowledge in the topic, and uh, they are good allies. They're really good allies. So um, they're definitely folks that you want to uh, let them know what's going on with you. Um. Oh, that wasn't Baron. That was Faye. I just, damn it, still don't know how to change this. Well, <laughs> oh, at least you're the best. Um... As a person with autism, masking for me is uh, pretending to be neurotypical. Yeah, uh, ne be a neurotypical person. Uh, it's extremely exhausting and over long, over the long term, extremely painful in and of itself. Yes, absolutely. Um, It's hiding in plain sight is a hard, is a hard thing. Um, and it's exhausting. It really is. Um, so yeah, if, if you are, if you're an advocate, if you're a safe space, um, letting, letting folks know that that's a, that's a thing, um, means that we can let our guard down. That means that we can take that breath. We can take that mask off and just be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, no, I'm feeling like crap. <laughs> Um, that does a lot for us. Um, oh, okay, so this is a question. Um, they're asking, uh, what neurotypical means. Um, oh gosh, how to explain neurotypical. <laughs> um, if you do not have autism, if you do not have any sort of, um, mental disability, learning disability, anything in that sort of spectrum, um, nothing that inhibits um, your ability to read social cues or um, communicate in certain forms. And there, there's a lot to it. Um, but standard, normal, normal bodied individual that has no sort of um disabilities of that kind um are referred to as neurotypical um so again it's uh pretending that you have no issues when you have issues um again exhausting yeah um and this is related uh it means that she's pretending uh to not be autistic for the benefit of non-autistic people. Yes. Because <laughs> um, some people are assholes. Some people are assholes. Um, it is an unfortunate situation, but it's a thing. Um, do to do. Yes, Fubar, we know you wear many masks because you have so many actual physical masks. Oh, that's what it means there. <laughs> um, oh my god, I love you guys. All the hearts. Thank you. You're wonderful. Um, okay, that's a good question. Uh, when is it okay to ask someone about their disability? Ooh, that's a good one. Um... When they are not in an emergency situation, when they're not dealing with um, medical needs, when they're not like in a moment of high intensity, panic, um, whatever the case might be, um, that's not the time. Um, so if you see that they got downtime, that they're, they're doing okay, they're in a good situation, um, Again, that might be masking. That's, a, you know, a thing. Um, ask. The best thing is just ask if it's a good time. Um, ask them 
when they think might be a good time. Um, it might even be a thing of letting them know that you're interested. And um, when they are free and available to come find you. Um, a lot of it is just keeping that open line of communication and um, it really being based on um, what they're comfortable with, what they can physically handle, what they can mentally handle. Um, because again, they might be masking. So they might look like they're totally fine, they're doing great, um, but they could be doing really bad. <laughs> um, and, and you may not be able to tell. Um, so a lot of it is going to be just keeping that open line of communication, making sure um, that they're comfortable and that um, it is a good time for them. But yeah, um, do ask, do ask. Um, but also, um, please understand they might not be comfortable either. Um, it's a huge trust thing um, because gosh, you're vulnerable when you're talking about this kind of stuff. Um, and it's hard. It is a very hard topic to, to discuss. Um, and, and letting, letting somebody know, um, something as intimate as your health, um, can be a hard, hard thing that some people are not okay with, um, doing. And, um, they might just need to know you better. They might just need to feel more comfortable. Um, just need some time around you to know that you're a safe person. Um, the biggest thing, just don't push it on them. Um, don't try to force that conversation. Um, and, uh, don't make them have that conversation if they're not ready to have that conversation. Um, so it's, it's a mixture of just keeping a lot of communication, letting know, them know, um, that you are available and that you're interested. Um, and that it is okay to do it on their terms. Um, Lisa was able to change her thing. Good job, Lisa. <laughs> um, oh. I was just thanking you for doing this. Um, I appreciate that. I, I really do. Thank you. Um, no, I'm, um, honestly, I'm, I am so dang honored that, that you folks, um, have come out to this, um, that you're taking the time to, to listen to all this. <laughs> um, it's, it's folks like you that, that we need in this game. And, um, I think I can speak for, for a lot of us in saying, um, that we appreciate you taking the time to, to care enough, um, to listen, um, and to, uh, be understanding. Um, thank you. <laughs> seriously, 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 thank you, um, to everyone that is here presently, um, and thank you to future folks that, um, if you, uh, end up seeing this in the future, if you choose to click and, um, watch this video, uh, thank you. Thank you for taking the time, thank you for understanding, thank you for caring, um, we appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, so, much love. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so um, that's pretty much the end. I'm going to just uh, give, again, a 20 second delay um, for any, any last things. If anyone has any further questions about anything that we've discussed, anything um, that I didn't cover that you would like me to, to quickly note about, um, please let me know, again, either in Discord or, um, or Twitch. Um, again, there's, there's gonna be some 20 second delay. Oh my god, you guys are amazing. <laughs> um, again, one last final silly dance for time. And any of those jazz hands. <laughs> Um, again, for those, um, watching at home, remember to drink along, keep hydrated, hydration is important. Um, if there is nothing else, then I will close this. Again, thank you so very much for coming to this, um, thank you so much, um, 
for, for your questions, for, um, for those that are advocates, um, and for, for those fellow Spoonies, um, love you guys, I'm here for you, um, if you ever need me, you let me know, um, you're wonderful, I love you, um, again, Admiral Ann Cash, most people call me Admiral, call me whatever you like, um, and this has been, uh, Facing Medical Adversity in AFGARD. Um, thank you for coming, and, uh, hope to see you again soon. Uh, stay safe, and take care of each other.